Well, the more competitive and the more impossible I think it is. It was just so, so high stakes. I think it's easy to make a career in Hollywood as, as an A-list celebrity than it is to make a career in music. You have to not only be an incredible musician, you have to be your own um, business, marketer, um, idea and creative machine. Constantly making connections with people and donors and audiences and have a clear vision and mission for yourself. So we ask for video of them playing, we ask for video interviews of them answering just a few simple questions about what they want from us and their kind of vision of what they want to do with music. Well, um, we also ask for programs. This is really an important one for us because I think most musicians don't realize that we're not just a competition, we're, we're also management um, and, and, and resource. And, and so for the managers to be able to sell these musicians out there, we need to know what kind of package and what kind of identity they have through their programs. Well, first of all, I loved preparing the programs because it gave me a sense of what I can actually do with programming myself and putting that out to the world. Um, that was a, actually an easy part, even though it took me a long time, because I have a clear idea of what I want to bring. The video interview was not <laughs> easy at all. Gosh, I had such a hard time with it. But, you know, it's experience. The video interview, I thought it was brilliant in that, of course, it's, it's hard to record your <laughs> artistic vision and the things that you want to do, you know, when you're sort of alone in your own space on a camera. But um, it's, it's unique in the sense that that they know your face and that it's not just like a headshot, a professional photo. It's It can be just, you know, you in front of a camera uh, talking about what you want to talk about, like what, what do you want to do in your life and in your musical career. And I think that's that's a brilliant thing. And, and it's not really asked for in many application processes. And there's also an artistic statement that we had to write, which was very moving um, to, to think about the prompts that were given and put them in a way that was very genuine and, and authentic to me and what I want. So the semi-finals are generally when we really want to vet people's playing and personality in a more kind of general sense without speaking too much because it's only about 15 minutes at the most of time that we can see each of the applicants. Well, there's two sides to it because, of course, you have the semi-finals and this whole semi-finals and this whole long list of repertoire, about 60 minutes or so. So, you have to find a way of preparing all of it, um, whilst keeping in mind that you will actually only play 10 minutes of it at the most. Great. Thank you. And then, of course, um, even though you don't know whether you'll be going through to the finals, that's, of course, the main um, objective, to have that all polished up and ready to go if it's needed. What we did do differently this year was we asked them to introduce um, one of their pieces that was on their repertoire list and imagine that we were an audience and, and, and asked them to introduce it in a way that maybe we would, would help us connect to the piece that say we weren't musicians, say we were a member of an audience somewhere. That was very telling actually. That was very interesting how many musicians responded to that. Having the eight finalists come in and meet with us kind of gave us an opportunity to really get to know them as people and have a conversation in a very relaxed way um, to see you know, what, what their thinking is behind their career and what their dreams are and some other practical questions. Um, 
that are important when you're considering working with someone, you know, because this is not just about how fantastic someone is on their instrument. This is also a working partnership that is very much a day-to-day -day thing. So that's a huge investment from both parties. We ended our rehearsal like an hour to an hour and a half after like they said the results would come out. And so we were all like, just like waiting because it was like, we have to focus until the end of rehearsal. <laughs> I found out about the news at four, around 4 p.m. I was, so I was, last time I was here, I was saying that I was gonna uh, go and see my teacher, Sam Rhodes. And so I heard around four and I, I, I heard from Tim and he, he called me and said I was in the finals. And then I ran back to go and tell Sam Rhodes that I made it to the finals. And of course, Sam, who's like 80 years old, he's like, you did? Like, it was like, congratulations. It was, it was great. It was, <laughs> I had a great time. <laughs> I was rehearsing uh, with a pianist for the concert I played last night and I got a call from a foreign number uh, and I was like, oh my god, this must be you know, CAG, so I picked it up and I knew it was them and I was so happy when they told me that I was through the final, so yeah, it was, it was a really nice start to the rehearsal and I'm really looking forward to playing. Um, professionals in the music field, we have PR, we have, you know, multi-award, Grammy Award winning record producers, we have some conductors, we have managers, um, and we do that because they've been vetted, their playing has been vetted up to this point, and so by the time they get to the final, we want to see what the industry thinks, the ones that are going to be booking them in concert, the ones that are going to have to be promoting them. Um, and we're curious to have the other point of view, not just the musician's point of view. It's not enough to play well because that's what your parents demanded, or that's what your peers do, or that's what you think you should be doing. You have to have a reason why you're doing it. I think my personal mission is to open up the floor and be an image or someone that can stand for minorities and for people that might look like me or you know are from my background that there are not a lot of us in this field. There really are not for string players, for brass players, for wood players. And to really hopefully inspire some people that yes, you can have a sustainable career in the performing arts and you can be somebody who excels in classical music and you can be somebody who's willing to get up here and to present a recital at the highest level. Tomorrow is only eight out of the many hundreds, I mean five. And um, it's a day that is really amazing because we have audience, we have actually an audience prize for the first time, which people can text and vote for their favorite. And um, it starts at 11, it goes through till four o'clock. And it's going to be fun because we have Bob Sherman from WQXR who's going to be hosting our finals. And after everyone plays, they're going to be quickly interviewed. I think we also encourage musicians to come on and treat it like a performance, talk from stage, introduce their pieces so that obviously we've had an interview with them, we've had a chance to speak with them, get to know them, but it's really important for us to feel like, you know, they are able to connect with an audience.
What I'm enjoying about the final round is that it does emulate or exhibit the feeling of a concert. So you see artists really trying to connect to the audience and getting feedback from that audience and how that fuels their performance is a really interesting thing to see. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm absolutely thrilled to be here today, not because I can introduce you to an instrument that you don't know, because I'm sure most of you, if not all, have either as active or passive experience of or with the recorder. Um, but I'm excited because I'm given the chance to introduce you to the sheer variety of music that we can, or at least I, play on the recorder. Oh, sigh of relief. Yeah, for sure. Um, we feel good and uh, it's an uh, exciting ex experience for us. Still on a little bit of a high, for sure. Um, there's just so much energy on that stage and um, being really excited about this particular performance. Um, at the same time, of course, your, your mind is going a million places, but trying so hard just to focus on the music and focus on communicating. Well, it's not over because we're waiting for the results and that's the worst part. Once we go into that room waiting for the deliberation, it will be back, back, very uh, nervous, uh, scary again. You know, I got the chance to chat to the, um, to the team yesterday, which was really fantastic. Um, such a lovely family, a community really, and yeah, it would be great to be a part of it. We'll see. And I'm sure all of you are waiting for the results, <laughs> and so I'll get straight to it. There are four winners today out of the eight, yeah? And I'd love you to come on stage as I call your name. So first, I'd like to call up the Mertz Trio. <laughs> next is Jordan Back. <laughs> Our next winner today is Tabea Debos. And our final winner today is Jamal Ayer. <laughs> 